Hey Drive, it's Stephanie Dixon, and welcome to The Wedge TV, your weekly dose of inspiration, knowledge, and action. Do you want to attract more clients? How about finding your dream partner? Or maybe you just want a little bit of confidence. Our guest today has one main answer for that, and that is Sparkle. That's right, my friends, Sparkle. Jean Smith is a cultural and social anthropologist, and her formula works so well that she's been featured in The Daily Mail, The Telegraph, BBC Breakfast, has written a best-selling book on it, and been invited to share her tips on TEDx. Jean, thank you so much for joining us on The Wedge TV today. Pleasure. So let me get this right. You were a, you did an undergrad um, for cultural anthropology, yeah. and then you did a master's in social anthropology. Yes. Were you always interested in studying people? Maybe you can share with us. Yes, I was. And actually, first I was studying language, and then I realized I'm not very good at language. But then, fortunately, I realized I was more interested in the people who were speaking the language, and that's what brought me into cultural anthropology first. Mm. And so, how did that evolve for a love and passion uh, on communication? Mm. Well, I've traveled to over 60 countries, and I've lived in seven. And in each of these countries, I realized that people acted slightly differently from the other, and they, they used slightly different rules. And that just got me interested in, in the communication aspect. Hmm. So what were some of these rules? Share with us. Well, I think one of the biggest is about whether a culture thinks being assertive and straightforward is important, or if they're more into the subtleties and what you don't say. For example, I'm originally from America, and the culture is very straightforward. What you see is what you get. People are pretty direct. And I've been living in England for the last 16 years. And again, in contrast, that's a culture that's a lot more subtle. It's what you don't say. It's, it's dancing around the actual subject. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. It's, mm. it's so different and so interesting to see how people communicate differently in yes. different countries yes. and with different cultures. So is there a story of someone who's completely changed after um, your teachings and experiencing mm. your knowledge? Well, I hope more than one person, <laughs> but um, what I think is most powerful for people is they feel like they're born a certain way. For example, I'm just born not being good at learning names. That's just me, and forever that will be me. But I think a lot of people feel empowered, yes, that's the word, when they actually learn the skills and the tools that I use to help people. Uh, I think that gives people confidence knowing that, okay, I might not be good at learning names, but that doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. I'll just practice and, and use the tools of, the, of my methods. Mm. So if we distill it down, what are the key components for better interaction? Mm. I kind of break it into two parts. It's about first having the right structure. So for example, names are imperative. It's about knowing the correct body language. So many people are interested in the idea of body language, but they're not actually using it correctly. For example, do your feelings change when I go like this? Well, maybe they do, because I've basically just put a barrier between us. Mm. So it's, it's thinking about the right structure, names, body language, and also being in the present moment, which I, I talk more about when I do coaching. It's, it's a really important point. And then the second part is the sparkle. So it's adding that extra layer. It's making you memorable, rather than just having a wishy-washy, plain conversation and then both parties leaving. It's, it's creating rapport and, and a bond with someone. Mm. So then there's different aspects to the sparkle as well. I love the idea of having a sparkle, um, and I think that definitely makes you for better interaction and, and a lot more, more approachable and fun yes. and memorable, as you said. I think that's a really important part. Yeah. So as you travel around the world uh, helping people in different cities, yeah. uh, have you noticed any common themes over those travels mm, and experiences? That is a good question. There are definitely commonalities, and, and I think one of the biggest ones is that People want to connect with other people. That's it. We're social beings. We're humans. But they always think that, ooh, if I talk to that person, I'm going to get a bad, a bad reaction. But the more people actually start the interactions, the more they realize, gosh, 95% of people are friendly, and, and they do want to have an interaction with you. But it's getting over that mind barrier that tells you, oh, no, I, I better not do that. I'm going to get a bad reaction. Mm. Yeah, I think that's great. It's having those barriers and just making sure that you're really communicating and, and being approachable, I think, yes. is a really important yeah. part of it. So in your book, The Flirt Interpreter, you have six universal signs of how people show interest to one another. So yeah. what are they? OK. So I've created an acronym called HOT APE to help us remember. So HOT APE stands for H, humor. 
O is open body language. As we said, it's being open, especially with the arms not crossed. T is about touch. And again, depending on the culture, touch will be more or less appreciated. Um, but generally, this is a safer place, especially in Western cultures. And then to get more intimate and flirty, you touch the hand. Oh, move see. down a little. <laughs> I liked that. Yeah, I thought you did. I could see that. Yeah, so that's touch. And that's how powerful touch is when used appropriately. Um, a is for attention. Everyone likes to feel liked, so it's how much attention is this person paying you. Uh, P is proximity. How close are you sitting together? Or first if someone's across the room and then all of a sudden they're next to you. This is not a coincidence, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, E is eye contact. And that is the number one way people said that they could tell when someone was showing interest and also how they express interest. Mm -hmm. So the eye contact would be more intense. It would happen more frequently. And again, it's not a coincidence. If someone's been looking at you at least three times, they're doing it on purpose. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's great. And also when you're speaking to someone, mm -hmm. you can tell if someone's interested if they're mm -hmm. looking right at you. So I love that. Whereas if they're looking around the room and that's they're looking it. for something else, then you know, obviously, well, they're just yeah. not interested in what I'm saying that's or it. talking to me. Yes. So I think that's a very awesome acronym. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in a commercial environment, yeah. how can we attract more clients? Yeah. I think by being genuine and authentic is mm -hmm. so important and it's, it's often overlooked. People are so busy trying to figure out what is this person going to like or how should I act that this person will respond to. And no, it's about being genuine, authentic, and also interested in other people. Mm -hmm. It's about being curious. And then finally, I think the last important thing is actually listening. So often we foc on, focus on being a, a good communicator, which means being good at talking. But actually, it's the listening, like you are right now, like in the moment, the act of listening. That's how we make people feel special. That's how we attract clients, mates, make new friends. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, something we touched on last night at the event as well, when we were chatting, um, is this idea of being present and not in the future tense. Right, and I think that's really important as well yeah. with what everything you've just said. Yes. Um, so being present, listening, engaging, I think, yeah, all of that is so interesting and on point. So what are some things that we can do today to be more likable? The first and the easiest is you just smile. <gasps> Smiling. Smile. That's it. I mean, again, it's, these things are so simple, but so underrated, and we don't do them. When you smile, you immediately just show that you're warm, you're approachable, you're open, you're a nice person, you won't reject the person. Just smile, not to mention, it sends chemicals to our brain. It increases the reward center of our brain and it makes us happy. So smile, and then just going back to what I said before, just asking questions, being curious about other people. Many people make the mistake of trying to get people to become interested in them. Instead, what you do is you become interested in other people and then through reciprocity, and liking, they'll be driven to also find you likable and want to find good things about you. Some amazing wedges of wisdom in there. I loved Thanks. it. Do you have maybe a final one that's your favorite that you live by? Yeah, that is, first, I mean, not being afraid to be yourself. This is one thing that holds people back. Just, this is me, this is who I am. I really hope you like it. And I'm sure that people will. Just be yourself. That's a great one. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your incredible sure. tips with us today. So for everyone watching, what is knowledge without a little bit of action? Which one or maybe two of Jean's incredible tips are you going to implement today? If you loved this episode, we'd be very grateful if you could share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you learned something today so that you can live more consciously tomorrow.